Are you wondering what an amazing SAT score is, or even just a good SAT score in 2022? If so, you've come to the right video. We're gonna to talk today about the statistics we have from test optional admissions that are hopefully going to give you a little bit more of insight into what a good SAT score is in a test optional world. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the different kind of bandings of colleges and what range those schools are in. We've pulled the precise data for this video. So I really recommend that you check out the blog that goes with this video because there you can go into the self-sortable chart and literally look up the estimated median of the SAT math score at that school that's admitted, the estimated median writing and language score. And what these score ranges are, just to explain to you guys, is we're dealing with the 25th to 75th percentile. That's the median scores, the median 50% of scores in a range that were accepted and enrolled in these universities. Now, caveats on this, I'm pulling data from those who were admitted during the COVID, right, serious COVID 2020, 2021 fall cycle. So these are kids who literally are taking the SAT. The March SAT test date was like all crazy and bonkers because that's right when shutdowns happened, like two days before that test launched, right? So the tests were getting canceled like crazy. So this is a class of students who literally had access issues to the SAT and was fully test optional. So what I'm gonna say is the first thing I'm gonna say is you need to take this with a grain of salt a little bit because our admissions climate this year is going to be stupidly competitive. I would expect it to be more on par with this data set than data sets from 2019 and before because it is a test optional environment and all this data is from a test optional environment. So that's gonna be helpful for you guys. But the other thing to remember is that in 2020, all of these schools who were admitting according to these score profiles were doing so where some students applying had a black box and no test score at all. My general rule of thumb with students is if you are at the 25th percentile or above, I would consider sending your test scores at this point. If you are below the 25th percentile, you might still want to send your test score if it happens to be higher than most people who are from a background or context that's like yours. And then if you are not above that 25th percentile and you don't have a context that would warrant, you know, special consideration, I generally recommend not sending your scores if they are truly test optional. And the nuance of test optional is actually something that you probably should be looking into at individual schools. Quick interruption, if you are taking the SAT, we have a crash course coming up in August before the August SAT that I recommend you guys check out. You can find out more about all of our course offerings. We have live classes with me. We have private tutoring, supertutortv.com. Check it out. We also have video-based prep courses for both the SAT and the ACT, which have over 100 hours of video. So if you are trying to barrel down this summer and really study hardcore for this test, that's the course for you. We're also doing college essay courses. So if you are a rising senior, or if you're in another grade and later you want help with your essays, we've started doing live classes. You can check those out at supertutortv.com slash essay. And of course you can sign up for our mailing list totally for free, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. Finally, we've started a Facebook group where you can ask me questions and I will likely answer them for free. You can check out the link to that in our description. It's called Competitive College Admissions. So type in Competitive College Admissions on Facebook, you'll find us. So let's start this off. I'm gonna start off with what is a decent SAT score and then I'm gonna move my way up to what is a super amazing SAT score. And I'm gonna break this up kind of by the hundreds. So a decent SAT score is something that can get you into a college you've heard of, potentially a flagship university in some states or a local or regional university in many states. I would call a decent SAT score something that's at least around average. And the average score on the SAT is about 500 per section. So here I'm saying anything from about 1,000 to about 1,200. If you've got a score in that range, it can get you into schools like Louisiana Tech, University of Massachusetts at Boston, Northern Arizona University, University of Toledo, Old Dominion, Central Michigan, University of West Florida, Kent State, Wichita State, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV, University of South Alabama, Texas State University, Rocky Mountain College, uh, Indiana State, Sam Houston State University, Lewis and Clark State College, University of New Mexico, where like nobody submitted test scores. Only five people who enrolled submitted SAT scores. So that's really like kind of at the lower end. 
of that range. So those are the kind of schools. So you see a lot of like state universities, which might not be like the biggest or most challenging to get into college or university in a particular state, but they're still nationally recognized. Now we're going to move on to what's a good SAT score. I would say a good SAT score is something where you're about in the 600s in each section. You might vary a little bit there. You might be in the, the upper 500s in one section, the low 600s in another section. They balance out to something kind of an average around a 1200. So these are schools where their kind of median average test score that they admit and that people enroll with is around a 1,200 to 1,300. So that's a good SAT score. You're going to see some more competitive schools, some more famous kind of state level schools, University of Denver, University of Colorado, Boulder, Marquette, Indiana University, Texas A&M, University of South Carolina, University of Arizona, University of Iowa, Temple University, University of Oregon. Michigan State University, University of New Hampshire, North Dakota State University. So obviously some good respected kind of state schools in there. Again, if you're interested in a liberal arts college, a smaller college, those colleges definitely exist out there that are, you know, impressed by scores in this range. So this is not an exhaustive list. There are many others out there, but it's sort of a, you know, ballpark starting ground for you to understand. We're going to have even more information, like I said, on our blog that goes with this video. Be sure to check out the charts there. Next list is very good. A very good SAT score to me is going to be like in the 1300s. So if that's sort of where you are, these are schools that are a good fit or match for you potentially. University of Miami in Florida, North Carolina State, University of Texas in Austin, University of Georgia, Pepperdine, Ohio State, University of Washington, which by the way is test blind until you reach the 50th percentile or above. So if you're not at the 50th percentile or above, and this is all in their literature, you know, I wouldn't submit. University of Connecticut, Drexel, Purdue, University of Delaware, Penn State. So you can see these are totally colleges you've heard of, good solid schools. One more note on this, as we get into these test score ranges, remember that there's a variety of majors at colleges and universities, and especially big universities like a place like Purdue. You're going to see much higher test scores in Purdue engineering or like computer science than you are if you're trying to major in English literature at Purdue. So remember to take this with a grain of salt. If you're applying to a super competitive major, you're probably going to want an even higher score than the kinds of things that I'm listing out. And sometimes you can even look up specific ranges for particular departments. Okay, let's talk great SAT score. This is an SAT score in the 1400s, okay? Now, granted, different colleges are going to have different preferences in terms of like math versus English. Like, does everything need to be above a 700? Or can you have a 650 in one section and a 750 in the other, right? That's going to come down to sort of more nuance, and that's why I encourage you to go check out the blog that goes with this video. So we're looking at Swarthmore, Tufts, Northeastern, University of Notre Dame, Georgetown, Emory, Boston College, Case Western, Wesley, Georgia Tech, Boston University, University of Virginia, College of William and Mary, Tulane, University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, Wake Forest, University of Wisconsin-Madison, Southern Methodist University, University of Michigan, Villanova, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. So these are some great universities. This list used to be a lot longer, everybody. And the reason it used to be a lot longer is with test optional, a lot of people are hiding their scores. And what's happened is, is universities that used to be on this list have moved up to the excellent list. So let's get to the excellent list. An excellent SAT score, I would say, is when you're scoring above about a 1500. That puts you in about the 98th or 99th percentile, depending on how you dice up the percentages, if it's users or nationally representative or whatever, you know, they've got all this stuff. And you're going to be surprised at the order of this because not every school that's in the top 10 here is a top 10 college. MIT, NYU, New York University, Harvard, Yale, Wash U in St. Louis, Dartmouth, Rice, Duke, UPenn, Vanderbilt, Stanford, Harvey Mutt College, Carnegie Mellon, Brown, Princeton, Northwestern, Williams, Cornell, Amherst. So I know some of these are really familiar, but just like last year, if you guys watched this video last year, we saw a huge influx of schools to this list as test optional became a more prominent policy. And the reason that we saw that influx is that when you don't have to submit a test score, if your test score is low, guess what you do? You just hide it. And so schools don't have that data in their pool anymore and they don't even have to report it. And thus they have these inflated kind of test scores. When they purport their test scores, they look even higher than they used to, even though that doesn't necessarily represent every single student that's attending their college or university, which is why we have another data point 
on our chart, which is the percent submitting SAT scores that enrolled in fall 2021. This is a tool you guys can use. Again, head to our website. You can see all of this data. It's a tool you can use to strategically say, hey, if I'm interested in this school, what's the story that this data tells? And how can I use that to my advantage or to my understanding to try to figure out what's important to universities and in a way that isn't just their Kool-Aid, right? Colleges and universities have a reputation to maintain. They're going to tell you a story, but that story isn't always the same as what they're doing. And seeing statistically what schools are doing, I think, is a really valuable tool for you guys as you're strategically trying to get into competitive universities. The other thing that's kind of funny is like whether you're applying to Harvard or whether you're applying to you know, Amherst or even NYU, you guys, NYU scores right now are stupidly high, which you know what that means? It says if you have awesome grades and great test scores and maybe your activities aren't that great or your essays are terrible, guess what? NYU might take you. So you can also use this to kind of figure out, okay, if their ranking is a lot lower and their admission rate is higher and their test score is still really high, guess what that means? submit your test score, get a really good test score if that's where you want to go. I hope you guys found this helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. I will see you guys next time and let us know how you did on the SAT. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.